This is the second part of the patient care and radiography with the introduction to medical imaging. This is chapter 9, part 2, starting on page 150 under hepatitis. In the early 1990s, there was some evidence that new forms of hepatitis existed, but researchers have since found that some of these other viruses do not cause hepatitis or any human illness. Only five of the common forms of hepatitis are addressed here. They are classified A through E. Hepatitis A and E are transmitted through blood and water contaminated with feces. Hepatitis B, C, and D are bloodborne. Hepatitis E is uncommon in the United States, and hepatitis D is only appears as a co-infection with infection with hepatitis B. Hep B is, can be spread through contact with blood or blood products, contact with body fluids such as saliva, semen, and vaginal secretion, and through maternal fetal contact. Hepatitis C is primarily spread by contact with blood and blood product. The risk of contracting this virus is greatest for people are for persons with large or repeated precutaneous exposures to blood, such as intravenous drug users, whose risk is 60%. Risk is lowest for those who have who are subject to sporadic precutaneous exposures, such as healthcare workers, whose risk is following a needle sick is one to two percent. The risk is fifteen percent to twenty percent for sexual transmission, and five to six for mater maternal to fetal transmission. Hepatitis B is more infectious than Hep C, although a needle stick injury is most common. A sufficient way method of transmitting the HBV virus. Another mode of transportation is through non-contact, non-intact non skin contact with infected blood on an environmental surface. HBV and HCV have been demonstrated to survive in dried blood on environmental surfaces for at least a week. This means you can contact contract either disease if you have an open wound and touch a contaminated surface. The manifestations of all forms are similar, jaundice, fatigue, abdominal pain, loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Hepatitis C is a more silent infection and may not cause symptoms or awareness of an infection until there is liver damage. Both Hep B and Hep C have the potential to develop into chronic infections such and cirrhosis. Although the risk factor is greatest with Hepatitis C, Following the infection with hepatitis C, about 85% of individuals develop a chronic infection, approximately 70% develop liver damage, 10 to 20% develop cirrhosis, and 1 to 5% develop liver cancer. These sequelae take place over a 10 to 20 year period. In December 1991, the OSHA, which stands for the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, developed regulations that require healthcare employers to provide the following HBV immunization for employees and procedures and equipment to prevent the transmission of HIV and other blood borne diseases in which employees have been exposed. HBV vaccine is administered in a series of three injections. The second dose is given one to two months after the first, and the third is given four to six months after the first, or at least two months after the second dose. One of those two months after the third injection Employees must have their blood tested for antibodies. If sufficient antibodies are present, the employer he, the employee has a positive titer. If antibodies are not found or antibodies in insufficient numbers, the series is, should be repeated. The hepatitis B vaccine usually provides immunity for 10 or more years. Healthcare workers who have positive titer follow an initial series do not need to test for antibodies again in the future. There is currently no proven effective vaccine for hep C despite researchers' best effort as the virus series greatly varies greatly among strains and mutates quickly. The number of new cases of Hep B and C has decreased because of immunization for Hep B, less neo sharing among intravenous drug users, and required blood donor screening for both B and C viruses. However, there are a periodic increases in the incidence of hepatitis A. Large outbreaks of hepatitis A occur frequent infrequently. Within the last such multi-state outbreak in 2014 originating in a pomegranate seeds imported from Turkey. Small outbreaks are more common and involve fewer than 100 people. Hepatitis A remains the most common form of the disease and best controlled by practicing good personal hygiene, especially hand hygiene. There is also a vaccine for hepatitis A, but indicated that only certain situations for individuals with medical, behavioral, or occupational risk and other indications such as travels to developing countries. 
management of occupational exposure to bloodborne pathogen. If an in accidental needle stick occurs or the skin is broken by a contaminated object, fall, allow the wound to bleed under cold water and splash with soap. If your eyes, nose, or mouth is splashed with a patient's bodily fluid, rinse these mucous membranes with water. An incident report must be filed even though the injury or incident may not seem significant. Follow the personal hygiene policies of your institute regarding what actions to take after exposure. Most hospitals now ask to have a, a baseline blood sample to be drawn to help rule out an infection in, acquired before the occupational exposure. Blood is drawn from the staff member and from the patient whose body's body fluids you were exposed to, if known. There are forms to complete to get approval for these tests. The process is usually handled through the emergency department, the employee health department, or the office tasked with employee health oversight. Follow-up testing will be conducted as needed to determine whether the infection develops. As HIV infection may not be immediately apparent in the blood, another sample is tested for HIV three to six months. The latest testing methods are able to detect HIV infection as early as nine days post-exposure. You will also be advised by the medical provider about post-exposure prophylaxis or PEP therapy following a puncture with contaminated needle. If treatment is recommended, it should be administered within two hours of the blood exposure. For most HIV exposures to warrant a PEP, a four-week two-drug regimen is recommended and several drug options are available. At the same time you are tested for HIV, you will also be tested for hepatitis B and C. If you have not had the hepatitis B vaccine series, it will be initiated along with the hepatitis B immunoglobin for immediate immunity. If there is time, if so if testing reveals that you are exposed, there is no effective prophylactic therapy for hep C at this time. So if testing reveals that you are exposed to an HIV C positive source, Follow-up HCV testing will be necessary to see if an infection develops. Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, or TB, is a contagious airborne, path airborne lung disease caused by acid fast bacterialis myobacterium tuberculosis, also referred to as tuberculobacterialis. Historically, this disease was called consumption because the, the, its victims tendency to lose weight steadily and waste away. In the past, incidence of TB in the United States was spread um, across all economic groups, today at the highest rate of active cases is seen among the homeless, recent immigrant, and immunosuppressed individuals. Although the incidence of cases in this country is much lower now than it is before the 1950s, the appearance of drug-resistant strains of the bacteria has raised grave concern. Pulmonary TB is spread through the airborne droplet nuclei that is generated when the infected person coughs or speaks. These particles are 1 to 5 micrometers in size, have a protective waxy coat, and are capable of sustained in the air for several hours, thus making them suspend, thus making them easily transmitted. The probability that a susceptible person will be infected depends on the concentration of infectious droplet nuclei in the air. The waxy coat allows the nuclei to live longer on the surface than any other pathogen, perhaps for even years. Excuse me. A great majority of those infected with the tuberculosis will not develop a clinical disease and become infectious. Within two to ten weeks following the infection, the bodily aided by the immune system begins wailing off the infection, preventing the multiplication and spread. When walled off, the disease is inactive or dormant, but it can be reactivated at any time. Reactivation may occur when the individual's immune response is weakened as to in the old age illness or malnutrition or the immunosuppressant therapy developed involving drugs that decrease the body's normal immune response. An individual with a weakened immune system is more likely to be to progress to active TB symptom. TB symptoms of active disease include productive or prolonged cough, fever, chills, loss of appetite, body weight, fatigue, and night sweats. As of the baculi multiply, they cause tissue necrosis that can result in lung cavities, illustrated in figure 9-1 on page 152. These spaces are a major reservoir for the infection that can result, that can then spread by coughing. Severe cases can be fatal. Extrapulmonary TB, which infects bone and organs, 
other than the lung account for a small percentage of TB infections. Patients with extrapulmonary infection and no active pulmonary disease do not require airborne precautions. The simplest and most common method of testing for TB infection is the tuberculosis skin test or TST, also called the PPD test. PPD stands for purified protein derivative, which is obtained from killed tubercle baculi. This test is administered to healthcare workers in parts of the United States where TB is prevalent to establish a baseline, as well as to workers exposed to individuals with infectious TB. The test involves the intradermal injection on the anterior form, the induration, palpable swelling that is spread is measured 48 to 72 hours by a trained medical, trained healthcare worker to determine whether the individual has been infected. A negative baseline test usually indicates that the person has never been affected with TB. If a new employee has not had a baseline skin test within the last 12 months, the initial test must most likely uh, may be falsely negative. Most institutions will administer a second skin test one to three weeks after the initial test to boost immune systems. A negative test the second time confirms that the person has never been infected. A positive result indicates that the person has at one time been infected with the belt and has developed antibodies to the organisms. Because few people develop clinical symptoms and become infectious, many people have a positive skin test without having active disease. If a healthcare worker is known to have been exposed to TB in the work setting, a TST or blood test may be administered immediately following the exposure and again 8 to 12 weeks later because it takes up to 8 to 12 weeks for the the time of exposure for a person to react to tuberculosis.